Yo! Welcome to the Compendium of Discomfort. My name is Michael and um, we're here to talk about Samurai Time Slipper or A Samurai in Time, a movie by Yunichi Yasuda who hasn't really done many movies like um yes done some stuff but i have never heard about any of those uh, there's just one that's called wende which is a pretty funny title because it's a weird uh, german word it's like turn around no idea uh, and the cast is pretty unknown as well like the um main actor is called uh, makia yamaguchi and um he has made some movies, but not many that I know. The uh, most famous is uh, Koku Hako, so uh, Confessions um, that I didn't really like, but it's very, very popular. So I guess, uh, yeah, I guess you might have seen it. And he was in some Godzilla movie. Oh yeah, Godzilla vs. Mega Gyrus or so, or so is German um, also. Um, yeah, that's his most famous stuff. Um, there's one more actor that's actually more experienced, has done more stuff. That's Hajime Inoue, who was in Shoplifters, Wolf Children, 13 Assassin's Tokyo, no Sonata, Eureka, Retribution, A Third Murder, a lot of Kiyoshi uh, Kurosawa stuff. And uh, recently, for example, in The Blood of Wolves. Um, yeah. So the most famous person in this movie. And um, it's kind of a, a big thing that this movie is even available because um, this director has done everything that's not acting. Um, like he's director, producer, writer, editor and cinematographer. And I, I think one of the actresses was actually assistant director or some read something like that so it's a very very low budget minimalist thing and um, it started to play in one cinema in Tokyo and from there on it got picked up by Toho and suddenly it's available all in Japan and of course uh, this one got picked up by third window films who will bring it to the west and um to say that up ahead uh, third window films never go wrong with comedies like with other movies very very rarely i have one or two or maybe three releases by third window films that i don't like and about one i talked on this channel um yeah that happens but there's rarely stuff that's really really bad um usually it's the opposite it's really really good and especially the comedies um i guess the most famous is one cut of the dead and recently there was a beyond the infinite two minutes and um a river and uh, then there was an older one that's called a summertime machine blues and why do i mention all these movies because i basically have a, a lot with this one in common besides being super super low budget and um quite big hits anyway uh yeah it's time and making movies and um yeah i love a good time travel movie and i love a good movie about making movies so how high is the chance that I will give this one a 5 out of 5? It's 100% because it's an absolutely gorgeous, fantastic movie. And before I tell you why, let me tell you very, very briefly about the story. There's not much to uh, explain. There's a samurai who gets into a fight and during this fight a thunderstorm storm, thunder storm starts and uh, he gets hit by lightning and wakes up uh, in a Kyoto somewhere like I mean he got hit in Kyoto and now he wakes up in Kyoto but it's a little bit strange people somehow just 
don't really talk they no? and um, they uh, repeat things it's like in a time loop and it's very very strange and he gets involved with some nasty people who attack a lady and um, it turns out it's a film set and uh, he just ruins the shot and yeah he's a time traveling samurai in the present in Kyoto where they just shoot uh, samurai movies and uh, it's very very funny and of course he gets somehow involved in the making of these samurai movies and it's all very gorgeous and wonderful and um, let me tell you why it's gorgeous and wonderful so first this uh, main actor uh, is just amazing he does a fantastic job i loved every second of him um being pleased by this modern world um like his first experience of eating cake um yeah like he he tries uh, he he looks at the cake and he asks them like the people who gave it to him like is this a uh, very high quality uh food is this very uh pricey so no no it's just common thing you can get that every day it's very easy everybody can enjoy this and he's like oh my god what an amazing country has this become if everyone can eat such delicious food anytime they want and he starts to cry and it's just moved and yeah then he watches this um uh jidai geeky tv show that he uh crashed uh, into and he's so moved by the story and the action and everything and he's just in love with what's going on here and um that's basically the start of his love for uh, movies and this and it's just wonderful to watch like this performance is fantastic the whole uh, cast does a very good job for a movie that's basically done by one guy more or less it looks very very good the soundtrack is wonderful there's really nothing i can complain about except for maybe two very 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 minor points that's super nitpicky uh, one is that the movie is actually quite long it's 131 minutes um but i wasn't bored at all so why would this be a problem and the other one is something that's that annoys me but i don't know if that's an actual issue for other people so for me i went into this movie expecting a comedy and it is a comedy for about half the movie and then like many comedies it becomes much more serious and dramatic it is still sometimes funny but there's a big big tonal shift and i I'm not the biggest fan of that. Like, I prefer a comedy that's funny from start to finish. But um, I think in Japan it's not even advertised as a, as a comedy, but an action drama. So uh, maybe just my perception is wrong. Who knows? Um, yeah, speaking of uh, perception and how it's presented, I just realized I don't have anything to uh, show you, so maybe I, I uh, manifest the, the poster here. Yeah, so that's it. And uh, yeah. Let's keep going. So, uh, yeah, basically, this is not that much to say. Like, the first hour or so is super, super funny. This is typical fish out of water stuff. And what's interesting is that nobody, the whole movie throughout, like, ever makes it a topic that he's actually a time traveler. I think the normal people never find out and um they just assume he hit his head and lost his memory and now he's he must have been a, a jidai geeky actor because he's in obviously in the costume so um yeah so that's very interesting very atypical for this kind of story like 
he he never tries to get back he's just like yeah this is my new world and this is cool and uh, i'm gonna stay here and have to figure out how to survive and um i like that very much that's a pretty new maybe touch um that you just say hey let's stay here it's maybe maybe, maybe that's the evil um isekai influence i'm not sure because uh, there's so many isekais where the protagonist is just like, yeah, okay, I live here. I died in the other world, let's stay here. I, I remember like in the 90s or so, you had these um, stories where someone came into a different world or a different time and they always went back home at the end. Uh, here they, they don't give a war and uh, they just keep him there and it's uh, wonderful. So this first hour is super, super funny. Um, like how he experiences the film studio and the whole world and everything is uh, gorgeous. Um, then he gets some sword fight training from the producer who is obviously not a real samurai. Maybe he believes it, but uh, he teaches our samurai to fight like a TV samurai and he, he just accepts it. That's uh, very funny. It's like, oh, oh, okay, I should do it like this. Uh, I know better, but uh, that's what you want me to do, so I'm gonna do it anyway. So that's pretty great too. And um, yes, it's just a lovely, lovely movie about love for these uh, period dramas. And um, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. There's not that much other stuff to say about it without spoiling. So if you have the chance, I know it's playing some festivals and stuff now and it will, I'm very, very sure it will get a Blu-ray release by Third Window Films. I mean, they have the rights for international distribution, so I guess they will make use of it. So yeah, uh, whenever you have the chance to watch it, watch it, please watch it. It's amazing. It's a... Uh, I would say at least top 10 for this year. And that's a very funny thing. Like last year was so bombastic when it came to Japanese film. And um, I expected this year to be a little bit quieter, quieter, more quiet. Um, but it's not, it's not. There's so much good stuff coming out now and it's uh, wonderful. And I spent too much time in the cinema and it's uh, amazing. But uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of amazing, let's talk a little bit about the spoilers and why the second half is so different. So our good old samurai fights up the ranks from the typical guy who gets killed in every scene and uh, comes up in the next in a different costume to die again. Um, and yeah, he goes up the ranks, gets a little bit bigger roles, so sometimes he's allowed to speak and stuff. And suddenly there's a press conference on TV where one of the biggest Jidai Geki movie stars ever um, declares his comeback to Jidai Geki and to make one more movie. He stopped like 10 years ago and now he's back for more. And uh, five minutes later someone comes into the room to tell him, hey, exactly this guy is there to talk to you, dear protagonist. And he's uh, confused and goes there and uh, talks to him and realizes that's his old enemy from this uh, sword fight in the rain with the thunderstorm. Um, and he came to this time like 30 years earlier. So now he's the older one and has already had the same experience and is now a big movie star. And from there on, we have a focus on their relationship, um, how they deal with each other, like, hey, they just wanted to kill each other a little bit before. And um, now they're working together. And um, yes, yeah, they are very different characters. Like the protagonist is still very much in his samurai mindset and the other one. Of course, uh, 30 years in the showbiz um, made him a different man and maybe less of a samurai. And uh, yeah, that's what they have to deal with the whole second half, like making this one big 
movie which will have a great amazing showdown and uh, yeah it's uh, wonderful so if if you if you like stuff about making movies or if you like stuff maybe like um it's a summer film was a very similar thing with time and stuff almost spoiled it's a summer film <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful movie. I love it. Uh, I love this one as well. I guess, um, like I said, look at least top 10 for the year. Um, maybe the best comedy of the year, but like Friday, there was a new Koki Mitani movie that started and I will watch it tomorrow morning. So that might be the better comedy because Koki Mitani is the sh Ooh, the poo poo, and uh, let's see how that turns out. But it's a very nice, very big surprise, like always. It's, I understand why uh, Adam from Third Window Films liked this film because it's uh, just what he releases when it comes to comedies. And uh, like I said, he he's never wrong with comedies, like. The stuff he puts out there is always good, so go get it as soon as you can. Watch it, it's amazing and uh, yeah, great.